Hello and welcome back to This Mobile Life. My name is Emily if you're new here and today we are going to cover the RV basics of batteries and electrical hookups and the one thing you must have in order to protect your RV. Stay tuned. Welcome to part one of our three-part mini-series on RV electrical hookups or basics 101. Uh, basically every RV, we're gonna start off by talking about the different types of power. Pretty much every RV, whether it's a motorhome, a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, something like that, they're all going to have usually two different types of electrical systems. You're gonna have a 12 volt system and you're gonna have a 120 volt or 110 volt system. The 12 volt system is the system that runs off the batteries in the RV and the 120 volt system is the one that's going to run off of the outlet that you plug into for your shore power. Uh, the 12 volt system is going to run things like your lights, your fans, uh, maybe your fridge, um, depends on your configuration. And the 120 volt system is going to run you know, the, the regular things you plug into a wall outlet at home, whether it's a computer, a, a vacuum, uh, it might run your refrigerator, uh, you might also have a propane refrigerator. Um, it's going to run pretty much your normal stuff that you plug into your house. Um, when you're in your RV. When you do go to plug your RV in to an electrical outlet at a campground or maybe you have a hookup at home, there's two different types of connections you're typically gonna see. Typically you're gonna have an outlet that looks like this. That's a 50 amp outlet. It's gonna have three blades here and a ground up here. That's what you're gonna plug your larger RVs into. And then you're gonna have a 30 amp hookup, which mine's actually plugged in and it's hotter than snot out here if you can't tell. So if I turn it off, everyone's gonna get mad because the air conditioning is gonna stop working. But basically, this is what the female end of a 30 amp outlet looks like. It's gonna have two plugs and a ground, two, two, two legs and a ground, whereas the 50 amp is gonna have the three legs and the ground. What type you have really depends on the type of RV you have. Uh, for the most part, you can use either plug, to, either type of plug to power your RV, but there are definitely differences. Uh, the bigger, huge RVs, big fifth wheels motorhomes are typically going to have a 50 amp system. Smaller motorhomes or travel trailers are going to have the 30 amp system. Uh, basically, what that means is you have more power that you can pull. On a 30 amp system, you are limited to being able to pull 30 amps of power from that outlet uh, before you trip the circuit breaker. On a 50 amp system, there's actually two hot legs and one neutral leg, and you can this is arguable depending on who you talk to but you basically can pull almost 100 amps of power so if you have a very large RV, very large rv you're going to have more things that are going to consume more power um, it's technically called a 50 amp circuit but both legs have 50 amp breakers on them um, and as long as you don't overload the circuit you can pull a lot more power out of that system now if you have a 50 amp rv and you take it to a campground that only has a 30 amp hookup you can still plug in you're going to need an adapter these are the type of adapters that you can use. So there's a ton of different ones of these and just depends on what you're trying to do. This particular one is designed to plug into my cord and it's a 30 amp outlet that'll actually let me plug it into a household outlet. This is uh, like if I'm gonna go stay at a family member's house, I'm gonna plug into their, their outlet outside their garage or something like that to keep the system topped off. This is the type of adapter I'm gonna use. I can also get one that's gonna go from this type of connection right here to this type of connection so I can plug a 30 amp rig into a 50 amp outlet and they make one that goes the other direction of wells of course. After you plug your cord into it you plug the adapter into the wall and you just have to make sure that you're not pulling more power than that outlet can handle. Uh, there's a couple things you can do you can turn your uh, battery charger you can adjust your battery charger settings you can turn things off in the RV um, just be aware when you are plugging a high power rig into a lower power outlet, you need to um, just be careful you don't overload that circuit or you're just gonna trip the circuit breaker. Um, the alternate is true as well. If you have a 30 amp rig, but there's only a 50 amp outlet, you can get an adapter that will allow you to plug a 30 amp plug into a 50 amp circuit and power your rig. Now, while we're on the topic of outlets and plugging things in and tripping circuit breakers, there is an absolute must have if you don't already have one or don't know about them and that is a surge protector for your rv this isn't like the little surge protector you plug in your computer to at home this is a device that will protect your rv from all kinds of bad things that can happen when you go to a park you don't know how how high quality the wiring is you don't know how old it is 
and or if it was even wired correctly. If you plug your RV into an outlet to at the shore power or the pedestal, they often call it, if you plug your RV into one of those outlets and it's not wired correctly or there's something wrong with it, you can damage a ton of stuff in your RV. You can damage your chargers for your batteries, your, your inverters, you can damage your appliances like your refrigerator. Um, it is not something you want to do. We have a separate video about that. That's part two of this series. You can check it out by clicking this link or watching it after this video where we go into a lot more details about what they protect. But public service announcement, please do not plug your RV into an outlet to, at, at a campground or at home or anywhere without a surge protector. You are just playing a dangerous game of potentially breaking your RV. And we've run into multiple situations where had we not had one, it would, have, it would have caused a lot of damage to our RV. When you are plugging in your RV, you have to make sure you turn that circuit breaker off. Whichever one's connected to this outlet, in our case, we have four breakers, actually we have three breakers up here. We have a double up here for our 50 amp, which is pretty typical. Then you've got a single for our 30 amp, and then we have another outlet over here for just a traditional you know, wall plug outlet to plug in, whatever. Um, you need to make sure you turn those off before you plug in or unplug your RV. If you don't, you can damage the outlet, you can fry the breaker, you can damage your plug that's going in and short circuit it or create a big arc. And it's just not safe. So make sure you turn that on or off, uh, turn it off before you plug your RV in or before you unplug your RV. Continuing on on the 12 volt side of things, so we talked about the outlets, we talked about plugging it in and what it, and what it runs for the shore power. 12 volt outlets are powered or 12 volt appliances and electronics within your RV. Sorry, there's a bug flying around. <laughs> Continuing on talking about the 12 volt system, that's a system that's powered by your batteries. Uh, and your capacity is really limited or what you can run and how long you can run it on is really dependent on how big your batteries are and what kind of batteries you have. Um, you don't have to be plugged in to use your 12 volt appliances or electronics. They run off your batteries. Uh, there's really main, mainly three different kinds of batteries when it comes to 12 volt systems. You've got your traditional lead acid batteries. That's what you have in your car. That's what RVs kind of usually come with. They're the cheaper of the batteries. Um, the one thing you need to be aware about with 12 volt battery, sorry, with lead acid batteries is batteries are going to be rated in a number of amp hours. That's how much power they can hold for you to use. With a lead acid battery, you can't actually use the whole battery. If you drain it down to zero, so to speak, uh, you are going to damage the battery. They're really only designed to go down to about 50% of their capacity before you recharge them. The other thing is a lot of those batteries are going to require maintenance. You're gonna to have to open them up and add water to them to be able to keep the battery healthy. It's, a, it's, it's, it's not a sealed battery, it requires maintenance. The next type of battery that you're gonna find is either a sealed lead acid battery where it's kind of a maintenance free, and the next step up from that would be an AGM battery or an absorbed glass mat battery. Uh, we don't need to get into all the technical details here, but it's just a better type of battery um, compared to a lead acid battery. It's gonna hold up better. It's gonna be uh, more maintenance free. And then the best kind of battery you can get for your RV is a lithium iron or a lithium iron phosphate is typically what they use now, a lithium based battery system. The benefits of lithium, they're sealed, they're maintenance free, and you can take them, usually depending on the battery manufacturer, you can take them all the way down to 0% and you're not gonna damage the battery. You can use all the power within the battery and not damage it. And then one last thing on the 12 volt system is your RV is either gonna have a converter or a charger inverter. The converter is what's going to charge your batteries and also allow you to run your 12 volt, um, sorry, your 120 volt, your regular outlets off of the, the shore power or uh, you can have an inverter charger. An inverter charger is really nice because with a converter, it's only gonna work when you're plugged into the shore power. Your 12 volt system's always gonna work, but your other outlets and appliances and your, your household electronic plugins are not gonna work unless you plug into shore power. With an inverter charger system, you can run the inverter and that'll actually take the power out of your batteries from 12 volts and convert it to your household electricity type, the 110, 120 volt system. So you can actually run your electronics and your devices and things you plug into the wall off of your batteries while you're not plugged into shore power. As we talked about earlier, if you get nothing else out of this mini series, please understand what a surge protector is and why you need one for your RV. We're actually gonna be talking about that in the next video, part two of this series. Um, if you got content out of this video that you found helpful, please click that like button down below. It helps YouTube let other people know who are looking for similar questions to be answered. Um, otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.